Hello everyone and welcome again. And this uh, few graphs, few illustrations here, I'm going to explain uh, a simplified destruction workflow and how it works. Uh, all of you guys should be very comfortable and familiar with this uh, because it's the base for um, our starting point. And then I'm going to talk about each uh, of the topic of the sections here, the fracturing uh, fracture fracture geometry or geometry fracturing constraints creation uh, and and illustrate more about and uh, talk about uh, the various techniques uh, that we can use for these guys and then once we fully understand this i'm going to talk about the more advanced workflow that i've used in this workshop okay so the the destruction workflow a simplified version is you get a geometry if you are um uh, if the you have communicated to the modeling department that this needs to be destruction ready, there is probably someone who's comfortable or already familiar with what needs to be done and there is rules and stuff like that. If you are not lucky enough, you have to work on getting uh, interesting geometry and interesting details in there so you get um, you, you can use that uh, within the sim. It is also very important to have uh, clean geometry, clean topology, no end guns as much as possible, and then uh, also no intersection if possible uh, at all, if if that's possible, but it's generally not the case. Okay, so then we take this base geometry and we fracture it. Uh, we uh, group it based on metal, wood, and concrete and glass. If there is other uh, materials, they will also be flagged. And if the pipeline is set up correctly, you would probably get some kind of grouping or some hint for what uh, is metal, what is bricks, uh, sorry, what is concrete, what is glass and stuff like that. If, you, if not, you probably have to set this up yourself, which is not uh, a big deal. Uh, but if you're planning on setting up an automated system, it would be nice to have some kind of a tagging or flag in the pipeline. And Houdini, we're not gonna talk about, uh, we don't have this because it's just a simple geometry, but I will talk about these, uh, uh, you know, uh, film or like a real production examples where you have data coming in from other departments and what the requirements are. Now you take that fracture geometry, you set up constraints, and then we feed this into the RBD solver. So you have geo, fracture geo, constraint, you put them through the laws of physics and um, the system will decide when to break constraints and how to react to it. We stream out packed points or animation and then we transform the RBD the geometry and pass it to the render. Okay, now as to uh, now the next thing, uh, I'm going to talk about the uh, fracturing geometry. Now there is two ways. There's not a lot of ways to fracture geometry. There's only two. Uh, Houdini 16.5 and 17 has uh, have a boolean sop that does a lot of uh, cool cutting so you can take a plane and uh, add noise to it and use it to cut geometry and also we can use Voronoi. Now um, each method has its own the, its advantages and disadvantages. With boolean my experience with it is that it's still not stable especially if you have crazy geometry which is most of the time the case and um, uh, we're going to talk about the RBD fracture node and the whole Houdini 70 workflow that side effects added and how that can be used to uh, basically fracture the geometry and set it up. Uh, with this workflow, um, now with the nice thing about booleans is that you can get very nice organic patterns. You can create some really cool, nice looking shapes. You can direct cracks and things like that. With Voronoi, um, it's... Uh, Voronoi is much more stable. It has no issue dealing with any crazy geometry most of the time. There's still very little issues that we can face, but overall it's very, very stable. And it has a very known uh, look, a very known uh, Voronoi look to it, where it looks very uniform. You can tell the pattern, you can see a repetitive pattern. And this is something we're going to create a system for to completely break. Uh, everything that was done here is actually done using Voronoi and you can see it's very hard to uh, see the patterns. There is cracks 
in very different directions there is details and it's uh, it's very stable as well so i'm gonna focus on the voronoi approach i'm gonna also talk about this if you guys want to explore any other alternative or go or pursue the boolean approach that's perfectly fine as well now um the bullet likes uh, uh concave uh, convex shapes where it doesn't have any cavities or anything like that let's see if i can find uh geo yeah so this is this has cavity so what bullet will do to create a collision for this it's gonna cr use a convex hole algorithm to basically find the smallest geometry that can wrap around this which will be a circle okay the smallest geometry that we can use around this guy is going to be a circle now when an object hits this part is not gonna see the the this part properly it's going to interact with the full circle because that's what bullet does and so to use uh, concave shapes we have to switch bullet solver to use concave shapes which is really slow or we can use something called convex decomposition which will find any concave shapes and split them okay break them or give you a, pro a result that is made of multiple shapes that it are not convex anymore so it will for example it will do it will split this like this and now you have two pieces and bullet can easily wrap this guy see here this block and wrap this guy with a perfect geometry that matches that rbd uh, that's the convex decomposition node and uh, previously i've been using a plugin for it that a friend of mine wrote houdini 17 has that by default and i'm going to show how to use it uh, if you guys want to go uh, implement that with my workflow i don't have to do that because most of the time the result i get is is uh, uh, is convex is uh, rbd ready but we can always uh, use this technique if we wanted to cool so the next part uh, we talked about the voronoi versus uh, boolean the uh, other thing is with booleans we can get really high res fractures with voronoi it's uh, tricky to add edge fracturing uh, uh, edge details it's tricky to get non-flat line non-flat separation but i have a workflow for this where we can get these kind of uh, details actually we can push the details even higher if if we wanted to and get the same level uh, that we get with uh, booleans and it will be much more stable okay now the next part is the constraint creation now uh, i've created these three boxes to illustrate an example of three pieces let's say this is box one box two box three and these are three rbd pieces that i want to create constraints for now we don't have a lot of ways to create constraints we can either connect the centroids of these guys like this okay so a link between the centroid of each pieces and then we can set this to be a glue a pin or anything like that we can set it to be whatever we want it to be now the thing is this will not provide enough freedom or flexibility for this piece to move over this piece for example if we do let's say a spring constraint or a pin constraint that allows it to rotate it's going to use this as the pivot so it will probably hit this corner and then rotate this way so there's not a lot of flexibility with this approach especially if we keep it this way the other uh, approach that i use is to take these guys after i create their constraints let me just if i can select them i cannot is to scale these guys to be a point instead of being a full primitive i, I scale them down to be uh, a single point and this works much much better with hard constraint or soft constraint that 
um, uh, with bullets. So this will provide a soft link between the two, but it still holds them uh, at the same time. Okay. Now this is the cheapest. This is the most efficient way of creating constraints. I'm trying to scale that guy down, but yeah, you guys get the idea. So the constraint will be scaled like that, and that's my link, and the pieces can pivot along this, which will create more realistic connection between uh, between the guys, between the pieces. So for example, here, there is a link between this guy and this guy. If we kept it on the centroid, the pivot will not feel natural, okay? But if we scale it down onto this point, it will have a better anchor point to, to rotate. Okay, now this is the most efficient. This is the minimum amount of connection that we need, that we can use, we need to keep these guys packed together. The next more uh, realistic connection is to connect the points. Okay, so between these two guys, so I connect the nearest points like this. And now we have connection between uh, all these primitives. Now this is one way of creating connections. The other way is to scatter points on this, scatter points on this guy and scatter points on this guy and build connection between any neighboring points. And this is the more much more advanced uh, or uh, expensive solution and it will give you more realistic um, behavior. But it's also very important to note that the more constraints you have, the slower the sim is going to be. Also, a value uh, of breaking the constraint that works when you have one constraint will not hold up when you have, will not work when you have 10 constraints because that force is now uh, happening 10 times. Okay, if a value of 100 works on one constraint and manages to break one constraint, if you have 10 of those constraints out of 100, that value will not break anymore. So you have to readjust your sim completely or your breaking rules so that it works with a different constraint uh, 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 connections or constraint numbers. The rule, uh, these constraints will then get passed to the bullet and we will be able to access various information from the sim. Uh, constraints, I'm missing S. So uh, a typical uh, way of breaking constraints would be the impact data. It would be uh, how far the constraint got stretched and we can use the height of the pieces, which I did here. So for example, uh, there is one block that uh, I think it's this one or this one that did not fracture. Okay. And I wanted to fracture it no matter what. So I told it, if you get close to the ground, if you, if the height of these constraints get to this level, just delete them. So this way it gives the impression that there is secondary fracture in anything, uh, uh, anytime something gets close to the ground or hits the ground, which is something we want. We can also use neighboring objects. For example, I can use uh, Kong's feet to, let's say, anytime Kong's feet hit uh, uh, constraints, we can delete them. We can make the object uh, just, you know, uh, separates and, and, um, and, and the pieces uh, separates and becomes more active. So that's one one way. And we can find many different ways to bring constraints. And this is something we're going to talk about extensively as well. Okay, now, I think I'm going to stop here uh, because we're going to talk about the advanced approach. And um, I think overall, we have geometry, we fracture it, we have different ways of fracturing it. We have different ways of creating constraints. We feed that into the RBD solver. We set up rules to con create the constraint connection. Uh, to break the constraint connection, we get the result out. The more pieces we have, more constraints we have, the slower the system is going to be. If we manage to get a result with 10,000 pieces, once we go, once we wanted to increase the piece count to 100,000, the result is going to be completely different. Uh, it will be a lot slower. It's not linear. It's going to increase uh, uh, a lot, especially with the constraint, because that amount will expand as well. So it's very important to uh, know these rules and how they're going to affect the sim that 
and, and how everything is related together and the next video uh, sorry and then uh, for the fracture we have different ways we can use whatever works uh, and, and whatever method we prefer same for the constraint creation you can use the existing tools in Houdini or we can set up something custom as long as we create a link that has the proper information we feed that into the system and done and this is basically the typical workflow and the next video I'm going to talk about the more advanced workflow thank you guys for watching and see you in a bit